What's up, Fight Fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Eddie Hearn in regards to Anthony Joshua. Eddie Hearn says that they think that there's a weak link in Anthony Joshua as he continues. Of course, we know he is fighting Kubrat Pulev, and Eddie Hearn said this. He says, Anthony Joshua had a great year last year in many ways. He's fought in Madison Square Garden in New York and then again in Saudi Arabia. But now he's back at Spurs in a great stadium. I'm feeling nervous for him as it's a big homecoming which comes with, play with pressure. Anthony Joshua back home for a fight after a long break He's been around the world, and now it's time to perform in front of his people once again. He says, this kind of pressure can get you to say. He continued to say, Saudi Arabia was low key where he was removed from the pressure, and it worked quite well for him. Now people will say, let's see the old AJ and the big knockouts. But I think we'll see a great fight against Pulev, in <clears throat> a huge potential for the winner. Now, looking at what Eddie's saying, okay, he's saying that there's going to be a lot of pressure for Anthony Joshua when he comes back because he is home, because they do look at it as normal scheduled pro programming, right? So we do expect to see these type of, knockouts like we saw before with Pavetkin, okay? And that was the last really KO that we seen Anthony Joshua been, and that's been in 2018, okay? So it is a worry and a concern from uh, Eddie Hearn because when there comes pressure, when there comes uh, familiar uh, fans, there comes um, maybe complacency, right? Distractions. So Eddie also says, he says, Anthony needs to keep focused on Pulev. He slacked off against Andy the first time, and we saw how that turned out for him, Eddie said. We can't afford to take our eyes off the ball from AJ's side with Pulev. Bob Aram is convinced that Pulev will knock out AJ. People look at the Ruiz, the Ruiz fight, and they think that there's a weak link in AJ. I think he's going to show you something very different this year. He's ready to put on a real performance at Spurs. Now, this is a big question mark because none of us know, except, you know, the inner core of his training camp, how Anthony Joshua will perform. What strategy will he take? Will he take the, the easy route like he did with the rematch with Andy Ruiz? Did he go in there and just box or does he go for the KO? Because these are good questions. And a lot of people ask, well, what do you mean? It's a great question because this is exactly what got him in this situation. The first fight with Ruiz. He thought Ruiz was done and Ruiz had just begun. Okay. And that's what got him in trouble. Left himself open, swinging wildly, you know, missing badly and getting countered eventually. Okay. He couldn't land that big shot. The first shot he put Andy Ruiz down for the first time in his career, which was pretty impressive. That was a money shot. Okay, and that shows you that Andy Ruiz has that type of chin. Now, the question you ask yourself, how does Pulev do to pressure? Okay, obviously Andy Ruiz works well on pressure. He's that type of fighter. You know, he's a true Mexican fighter. If you bring the fight to him, he's going to bring the fight back. That's the fight he expects. That's the fight that he favor that favors him. Not Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua went in there. He thought, oh, I'm going to get this kid out of here. And I'm going to hurt this kid. Oh, I dropped this kid. Let's take this kid out. It didn't work that way. Okay. This kid was like, great. Now let me get up and show this guy what I can do now. And he did again and again and again. Now, Pulev, the question you ask yourself, if, if AJ hurts Pulev, that's when the fight actually begins. That's when the question mark comes about will he go in there balls to the wall or will he do will he have hesitation so that's the question you ask yourself so he could be hesitant okay it happened to the best of them it happened to marco antonio barrera it happened to um um manny pacquiao okay manny pacquiao used to go in there and he he starched barrera he starched 
uh, um, Morales after that first fight, after Morales beat him, um, Juan Manuel Marquez, and then after that knockout from Marquez, he was a different fighter. He didn't go balls to the wall. He didn't rush straight in. He was real tentative, okay? So that could psychologically be where Anthony Joshua's mindset is, where that pause, that hesitant pause will be when he hurts Pulev with a right and a left hook, okay? Now, if he catches him with a good uppercut, followed with a left hook, and he drops Pulev, does he go in for the kill, or would he, would he remember what happened to him the last time he did that? So we'll see where he's at psychologically, mentally, okay? Because a lot of times, that's someone's hang-up. He might just sit back, and if you see him drop Pulev, and then he comes in and, let, and lets off the gas a little bit, you'll see then at that point, okay, there's some hesitance there. Okay, there's some sort of reminder of fear or caution from what happened that time in Ju on June 1st in Madison Square Garden. Okay, so there's a lot could happen with Anthony Joshua. Another question you ask yourself, what happens when he gets caught with a big shot? Okay, because in the rematch, he didn't really put himself in a situation to get caught with a huge shot. Because he knew what was coming. He knew what was expected of Ruiz. He knew Ruiz threw left hooks and he was a heavy-handed puncher. He was a decent puncher. You know, I don't think that he honestly expected him to hit behind the head. But, you know, uh, no excuses, right? I, that is a reason to me. I would address that if I was Team Joshua. But anyway, um, he never put himself in a situation where he did get caught just flush. He got caught with a couple good jabs, and that jab actually in the second round uh, cut him, gave him a cut on his eye. So first blood went to Joshua in the first round. Second uh, round went to Andy Ruiz, right? So uh, it was an interesting fight, to say the least. But with this Pulev fight, it would be a different fight, you know, a different fighter, uh, different height, different style, you know, a heavy-handed puncher in Pulev with nothing really to lose. This is his shot, and he's going to take it. He got Joe Goosen on his team. So it looks promising. But Eddie Hearn, he should be concerned. And I understand him being concerned because we really don't know. And if he was so if he was so certain that he was gonna go in there and blow out Pulev, he would have said it in this interview, but he didn't. You know, he said he's gonna you're gonna see something very different this year. So we could see a little bit of this versus a little bit of that with Andy Ruiz or with Anthony Joshua and, and it's gonna come together hopefully in a nice neat package when he fights Pulev. So we will see how he performs, you know. Um <clears throat> but I think if anything he's back home, I think it's less pressure because I think he's in his comfort zone, honestly. You know? But and if it is, it, I don't think the pressure would come from the fans. I think the pressure would come from within because of what happened previous, okay? A loss can take something out of you, but he did receive the win from the guy that beat him, so that does uh, satisfy that loss. That helps you heal mentally after you've been defeated the way he was defeated. So I will counterpunch that. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think about Eddie Hearn's comments about Anthony Joshua. Will he remain the same fighter? Will you see a different fighter? You guys let me know. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys can counterpunch. Peace.